Beta Tool Trolley, the tool car for outdoor use. I was watching Jeremy Clarkson's farming show on Amazon Prime. He was fixing a huge trailer on the back of his tractor. Look at his toolbox. Basically a handheld one, something you'd order on Amazon. Heavy machinery and he's fixing it with tools one step above child's toys. Time to upgrade our tool storage. Why don't we- You like tool carts? I sure like tool carts. Don't get me wrong. I love the snap on toolbox tool chest. With the black, the matte black, matte green, green, lime green, red, chromed out, whatever. Unfortunately, it seems that I need to go to the job. The job never comes to me. And sometimes that job is in a remote location. A location that has uneven surface to get to it. My tool cart doesn't work. Look at this video. Ever since the invention of the wheel, the common knowledge that bigger wheels go over bigger things. And tool carts, the majority of them, they have small wheels. So how are they supposed to go over bigger things? They can't. So my goal was to find a tool cart with better off-road capabilities. Bigger wheels go over bigger obstacles. This beta tool cart at over $400, is it a worthwhile investment? Here I am in my man cave, my dream garage with my GTR on my classic Mustang. In the middle is my snap-on toolbox, my big snap-on toolbox, which ain't going nowhere. The problem is, if you look out the window, you'll see a broken car in my backyard. How do I get tools from my snap-on toolbox to that broken car way over there? Let me introduce you to the beta tool cart. This video might be a bit misleading. It's not as easy as sliding it on PowerPoint, but it's a heck of a lot easier than taking a typical tool cart with the small sissy wheels and trying to drag it over uneven off-road situations. I'm not sure if this tool car is going to be my official tool car for here on out. Reason being, it's kind of a small tool car. Can't throw that many tools in it. But the benefit to that is that it makes it easier to load it in the back of the truck, back of a car almost. There are other manufacturers that make toolboxes that go over uneven surfaces, off-road situations, real good manufacturers like Milwaukee. Check this out. Free to go. Fix the world. I'm going to fix the world with this new toolbox, man. What, what, what else is there to fix? The toughest part about having a real durable toolbox is the size of it, man. Trying to load in the back of a truck, it's difficult. You can't load the whole thing up. You got to disassemble it and put it in individually, all the pieces of the toolbox. This is the Milwaukee Packout. This toolbox shits on everything when it comes to outdoor toolboxes. The only thing it doesn't do well is display the tools in a convenient, easy to grab way of displaying the tools. Let's say if you got something on the bottom. If you have it in the Packout, you have to unpack out everything in order to get to the bottom. Top, disassemble, middle, disassemble, open up the bottom, pry out the bottom thing. In the beta tool cart, all you have to do is open up the tool cart. And there it is. There's the tray looking at you with an easy to access way of grabbing the tool. What else could you ask for? Well, maybe you could ask for a bigger toolbox, but hey, you gotta sacrifice something. And here I am rewinding in time the first day I had it unboxing it, just kind of figuring this thing out. I didn't really know how to use it. I didn't know how to lock the trays and you are gonna wanna know how to lock the trays because when you are traveling through off-road territory, the trays tend to slide open. Here's an example. Stop. Did you see that? This is what happens when you don't lock the trays down. If you don't lock the trays down, you're just making your life difficult like you see here in the video when I first got the, the cart and learning how to use it. If you don't want your tools to go all over the place, you're gonna want your trays to be locked when it's in a stowed position. Let me explain. The fancy thing about these trays is they slide in and out both directions. I guess there is no front side to the tool cart. So depending on whatever side you are, that orientation, that's open. So you can slide it towards you or away from you. In order to lock it in the stowed position, make sure the tray is in the center of its sliding motion, front and back, and drop it. And to finalize the locking motion, take the tray that's on top of it and sandwich it down on top of it. There's two configurations that this cart should be in. There's the cart position and the stowed position. The cart position is when you use it like a cart. The stowed position is when you use it when you're taxiing around. I'm guilty. I move this thing around in the car position when I go on longer distance trips, which is a no-no. If you're gonna go fix that broken car in the backyard, you need to put it in the stowed position so you can truck your butt on down to the broken vehicle, open up the tool cart and fix it on site. The landing pad, the top helipad, measures about 15 by 10 inches. 
and has six different cubby areas for small screws and parts. The reason I like to measure these on the inside portion is because I have these these organization trays that I ordered from Amazon, I made a, I made a past video about it that I use for uh, that I use for my wrenches. I'm also going to use them for my pliers too. The measurements for the trays are 11 by 23 with about a three inch depth. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but be sure to measure it yourself too because you're going to want a breaker bar in that bottom, the bottom storage area. That thing measures the same as the trays, except it has a depth of roughly nine inches. So keep that in mind when you're ordering your breaker bar and larger tools. The only way to move the cart is to pull it. You can't push it from the handle when it's in the stowed position because the handle just falls over. You can, however, take the top tray and lock it in a position about an inch above the tray below it, which makes it so that the handle locks so that you can you can push it around instead of pulling it. If you don't do that, it then just, just flops around in the wind. Fortunately, if you do that, the top tray will become unlocked and slide around. It's a design flaw. This thing is almost perfect. About 10 to 15% bigger. A way to push it without this thing knock it down. And at the same time, these trays be locked in. Yeah, a little bit more research and prototypes. And this thing could be a, this thing could be a winner here. I'm leading you guys down a wrong path. I apologize. This thing is not a tool cart. The correct name is Folding Tool Trolley, especially for outdoor jobs. C27S. I think that's the model. Beta is an Italian toolbox manufacturer. They were in the early days of racing. There's even pictures here of them in the past Formula One. I'd sure like to see those days. They sponsor MotoGP and a handful of other sponsorships. Hopefully one day they'll sponsor yours truly here at Footage Factory. Here's the cart in its final state. I got these magnetic trays. I put them on the bottom. If I like them, I'll bolt them in. I ended up getting the wrench tray. This is how it's going to be, man. Kind of cut and dry. We take you away from your regularly scheduled program. This is the Snap-on TUV, the second box. This is the Snap-on EUV, the second iteration, the newest version of the TUV. I like the old one better. It has beefier tires and that's just my taste. Unfortunately, I can't find the measurements for this. The only thing I can find measurements for is the EUV from the Snap-on's website. Because we will assume the EUV and the TUV have the same measurements, we will refer to them interchangeably, especially for the sake of my point. Look at it in all its glory. This thing is big. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Unfortunately, that broke down car in the backyard. I don't know how we're gonna get the toolbox out there. I mean, are we gonna push it out there? I mean, I guess it would be nice if the if the toolbox itself had a little motor inside of it, a an assist motor where you just press a few buttons and it help you move. How much does this thing weigh? This toolbox can hold 16,000 pounds worth of tools on top of weighing 2,300 pounds itself. Uh, I'm no good at math, but I can deduce that 16,000 pounds plus 2,300 pounds means we're not pushing this thing over a long distance, especially over uneven four by four off-road surfaces. Look at this poor guy. The whole purpose of this video was to review the beta tool cart and it's a pretty good tool cart. It's a little bit on the small side. The Snap-on TUV EUV, the $40,000 toolbox and the beta tool cart at $400-ish. Are they in the same video? They're not even in the same league. It's my dream to have a Snap-on toolbox, maybe something like this TUV. But I think in the meantime, while I'm working in outdoor situations, I might just make a smaller version of the TUV, the same thing just reduced size the measurements smaller so yeah here's the me a footage factory making this tuv at a one-third scale approximately stay tuned let's see what i got in store